woman never belongs to you. It's just your turn. Of course her parents don't have a problem with me being black. She's past the wall. Get your fat ass off the couch, start lifting weights, and learn game. You're welcome. So you got drunk at a frat party, then fucked the football team? You're not a rape victim, sweetheart. You're a slut. What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 413th edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. It is Thursday, February 21st, 2019. We are brought to you by the Donovan Sharp mobile app. You can schedule and pay for consultations by TSR Merchandise. Read my red pill reading list and much, much more. You can do that all from the app. Now, the Donovan Sharp mobile app is not available to the public, so you will not find it on the App Store or the Google Play Store. You can only get it on DonovanSharp.com. Get access to my complete content on DonovanSharp.com and be sure to subscribe to my weekly newsletter to stay in the know on all things Donovan Sharp. If you have a question or a comment for myself or my guest, give me a call, 914-205-5356. Outside the U.S., it is 001-914-205-5356. If you block your number, I'm going to hang the fuck up on you. Okay, those of, listen, those of you who have watched me over the years knows that this is a hard and steadfast rule on my show. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get right to it. My guest tonight is the founder of one of the most influential websites on the Manosphere, Returning Kings. He's written countless books like Bang, Day Bang, Pussy Paradise, and Freedom of Speech Isn't Free. His latest book entitled Lady is now available for sale, and today is the last day to get a discount. He's been on Dr. Oz. He's been banned from entire countries. He's even been detained by foreign authorities for having a black belt in women, I think, as he described it. I, of course, am talking about Roosh v. Roosh. Uh, thanks a million for making time for us tonight, man. We really appreciate it. Hello, Donovan. It's great to be here. I feel like I'm on with the old friend. <laughs> well, listen, um, speaking of old friend, I actually have written for you for quite some time. You actually started Return of Kings, I think, back in October of 2012. And I think my first article with you was in somewhere in the neighborhood of March of 14, somewhere like that. Yeah, um, it feels like such a long time ago when I started that website. Didn't expect it to gain as much traction as it did. I think it red pilled. I mean, I don't want to exaggerate, but hundreds of thousands of men. Uh, and, it, and it was when it was ongoing, when it was at its peak, and I would say its peak when it hit its stride, yeah. it was around 2014 uh, when when you came on. It yeah. was such a pure thing. It was there was no other site like it um and it was great to have men like you contribute their experiences and stories and knowledge i mean that site wouldn't have been what it was without men like you well i appreciate you saying that and you know it's interesting those were like back in 2014 early 15 those to me were the glory years because if you can remember i was i was the guy that essentially replaced athlon mcginnis athlon was a fucking superstar he was the man he decided to, I guess, I guess he decided to sort of move away from Return of Kings for whatever reason. I'm sure you and him are still cool. But when it was me, you, Matt Forney, the rest of the guys, man, th that really seemed that really seemed like the golden years for Return of Kings. Yeah. And a lot of people wanted to give me credit for doing that. But really, it was such an organic thing. Yeah. It's not like I was funded and spent millions of dollars on the on these articles like you see with the media. I was it was such a, it was just men who wanted to share, you know, and I provided an outlet. I didn't um, monitor them, edit them. I mean, most of the articles you gave me, I published it as is just for yeah. a couple of grammar corrections. So it was so for that brief moment of time, you know, it was just such a open thing. But then th all good things come to yeah. and and all, I think all those viral articles actually hurt us in the end. It brought a weird element, brought a lot of media uh, media attention. And that 2016 meetup outrage in the yeah. beginning of the year, that was the beginning of the end. That's when the shutdown started happening. Yeah, getting them by discuss and all that. Yeah. yeah. So, but when it was in its stride it was great a lot of men i mean so far rok has been closed for about six m months now and a lot of guys ask me when are you going to bring back i'm not it's not coming back it was it existed in a brief moment of time but bringing it back down now is like beating a dead a dead uh, horse it would have to be something different something new uh but that site existed and i wanted it to go out on top a bit it did i did close it when it was starting to get on the down 
swing. But I am very happy with the articles that went up. I think it served its course and uh, it's still online now. So men can still check out those articles. Yeah, listen, to me, um, I didn't know that the that the website was not going to be back. It was funny because I was on, I think, the very next day, and I'm like, no, Roosh has not shut down the site. You fuckers haven't won, blah, 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 blah. But you're right. I compare I compare Return of Kings that I would say that 18-month, 18, 18 to maybe 22, 24-month period, it was like a comet. It was like Tiger Woods for 10 years. The world loved Tiger Woods. There was Return of Kings. We, I mean, we were it. Like, we were the it guys. We were the beacon of the red pill. But then, you know, I think it was uh, Matt Forney's piece, uh, all, you know, girls with tattoos and, and piercings are damaged. And then, of course, Toothmosis broke the internet with 24 signs. <laughs> she's a slut. But I agree with you. I think there's only so many articles. you can, Eight signs, you can tell she's a slut. Uh, you know, five ways to pick up girls in XYZ City. Just like you said, in its heyday, it served its purpose. Uh, just like you said, man, all, all good things must come to an end. It was certainly good. Yeah, I mean, I truly believe that if something gets uh, becomes like a drag, you're trying to relive something, you're trying to bring something back when it's costing you more to uh, bring something back. I think that's when you know that this or this organic, this this star is starting to fade and everything in life has a timeline, everything. I mean, even men who want to chase girls. Uh, there is a point in your life when you're, you're just so focused on it and it's such a natural thing for you to say, go to the bar and hit on girls, right. approach some girls during the daytime. But then there's going to be a point when you get older, yes. now, now it's a drag. Now, oh, I need to pump myself up a little bit more. It's the weekend. It's 12 o'clock. I should be out, but I'm still at home watching YouTube. I'm seeing that that's when you know it's time to move on. It's time to move on. A lot of men, they get too attached to a lifestyle, to a website or whatever, a business. You can't, they can't let go. They're trying. So now they're putting energy to bring it back instead of energy moving forward in something new. So, you know, this is how I approach things. A lot of people get upset at me when I close this down or that down. But you got to move on. And life is movement. It's yeah, constantly it's moving. Motion, you can't get attached. I remember uh, you did, I, I forget which episode you did, uh, a podcast with Quintus. I actually wrote an article uh, sort of based around that. I remember you said, I actually thought that I'd be 60 years old at the mall asking girls where the pet shop is. And, and I think at the time you were 35 or 36, you said, I'm 30 some odd years old and I, I can barely stand the thought of a club. Guys ask me all the time, Donovan, you had a great time in Vegas. You've had all the success with women. Why have you given it up? Listen, guys grow out of this stuff. And there's only so many blondes and, you know, brunettes and fake titty bitches that you can fuck before it all just it, I'm like, don't get me wrong. Like nothing. I don't know about you, but nothing is, you know, sticking your dick in a new vagina. That's always going to be great. But it's getting to that point that wears thin on a lot of guys. And that's why guys like you and me sort of transition. And when people see that transition, see, we told you that it was no, no, no. Life is evolution. You grow up, you move on. This is how life works. When I was young and I started a game, I didn't see it as work. It's really actually if to go and pick up a girl, get her into bed. It's a series of steps. It's a lot of steps. Oh, yeah. uh, but when you're starting it and you're really horny, uh, you don't see it as steps. Going to the club with your friends or the bar or hitting on girls, that's fun. Yeah. That is a joy. Yeah. Even if you fail, you're like, bro, I just talked to that hottie and I almost got her number. It's, it's a joy. It's fun. That's how it's pure so that – that kind of right attitude to the girl comes out. But then as you get old, as, as you do anything a lot, you start to see the steps involved. Yeah. Not only that, but you start to desensitize yourself to the reward. So yeah, your first couple of bangs, your first one night stand, your first club score, man, you, you were on cloud nine. Of course. It was amazing. But then now you're getting up there in the notch count. Yeah, I kind of wish I slept well that night instead of brought this <laughs> go home. You know, why? I can't wait till she leaves. I'm, I feel hungover. Yeah. So what happens is the return on investment goes down. You see it as work. You lose that natural excitement towards it, which is a, which is attractive in itself sure. to, to women. And then that's when you know, hey, I had my fun. Of course, we still game. I, I can't speak for you, but I still game. But it has to be. I have to be feeling social has to some, the girl has to be giving me some kind of sign. Yeah. yeah it, it has to be, it's now it's a once a week. I feel inspired 
but not 10 approaches every night. No. Oh, no, 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 dude. Like I'm, I'm long. I, I did a, I did an article and a, uh, an episode called building a harem is a full-time job. It was great fun, but when it, when you feel like you have to punch a time clock, that's when you feel like it's, it's time to go. So Roos, you're considered to be one of the godfathers of the Manosphere, one of the three R's, one of the founding fathers and all that. Now, a lot of creators like myself, uh, you know, I've got an origin story about how we found the red pill or whatever, or whatever the case may be. As someone who is widely considered to be one of the founders of the red pill, what was the event or the events that led you to what is now called the red pill? Was it a girl? Was it girls? I mean, what happened? It was basically, I mean, I wanted to get laid. I couldn't, but really, if I looked at it from a biological standpoint, I was a late bloomer. I didn't yeah. go through puberty till I was 18 years old. So I was 17, 18. I looked like I was 12. Oh. I remember yeah. I was driving. I was 18. People looked at me like I was some kid that stole his parents' car. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? I didn't have this beard. I looked like a boy. So all these other guys my age are getting girls. I, I didn't really have that s sexual vibe yet. I didn't go through that yet. So then I was late. Uh, so all these guys 18 already have some experiences, dating, kisses. I had nothing. So then I had to play this catch up game. I didn't have the confidence of these earlier experiences. Right. So for me, I had to learn it in a manual way. This is when I discovered the PUA community. I was 21 and I started to implement it slowly. But it's after I graduated from college, uh, I was around 22. I was a virgin still. And I really dived into game and thank God it worked. It worked. Game worked. Yes. Um, and that's, I would say that's the moment my biology put me into that because if i was a younger man if i went through puberty at a normal age 13 or 14 i don't know yeah. how old it is i don't think i would have had that so then uh learning about game it started to hit me that hey women and men are definitely different it's not what i was taught in school right. and one door opened after the next and that's how i i got here okay now Talk to me specifically about Return of Kings. ROK is obviously, you know, it's it's it is probably was one of the most visited websites in the Manosphere, and in my mind, it's uh, Return of Kings is your magnum opus to the web. It's 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 your legacy. Now you started it back in 2012, and you know it's it's easily one of the most recognizable blogs in this sector of the web. What gave you the idea to start that website? Of course, Rushvi and the Rushvi forum. You're a virgin out of college. You learn how to pick up girls. What? What inspired you to say, hey, you know what? I need to put this on the internet. So I started a blog back in uh, 2001 or two. And then that was going well. So it was at dcbachelor.com first. It was mostly a D Washington, D.C. local blog. I was connected to a female socialite at that time. And she gave me the first you know, uh, hits. So I was known locally. Then I changed my name, uh, the blog name to rushv.com. I was doing the blog and then I read a biography on Alexander the Great. I was in Ukraine and that inspired me in an egotistical way. Like I want to leave my mark. I want to be a legend. This is when I was still, my ego was very strong. I was really, I, I felt I felt more like a man with every hottie I banged and so on. So I wanted to leave a more. I wanted to, I wanted size, something bigger that would make a big impact. I wanted power, influence. And, you know, it was this kind of thinking. Hence, you get that name, Return sure. of Kings. It says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right, sure. And so I wanted something bigger than a personal blog. And I made it. And it, it, it did well. Every viral episode, oh, yes, we're getting bigger and better. Right, right. And so that's where it started. It's mostly the ego gain. It wasn't so much the money gain. I mean, the site did make some money. It could fund itself. It could fund the writers. But I did it because of the ego. And so this is when my ego was at its peak. You know, it's interesting that you say that. There are so, so many of our detractors love to say, Donovan, you're doing X, Y, Z because of ego, right? Um and I've never backed away from that. Like, listen, man, my, my my girlfriend's hot. She's attractive. You know, she's got a porn star buddy, and I like showing it off. I show it off all over the internet, blah, 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 blah. And guys constantly come at me. You're doing this, uh, you know, for for self flagell or uh, a self gratification, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, listen, like this is I'm, I'm at this stage of my life. Yes, I am bragging. If you have a problem with that, you can go fuck yourself. Let me ask you this. Did you ever imagine 
I mean, really think about it. Did you ever imagine that you would be this? Did you ever imagine that you would gain this much notoriety and really, for better or worse, become the most infamous, one of the most infamous people on the web in the world, really? You know, it never really hit me. I mean, there was, I actually wanted to be known as a writer. I wanted to do bookstore signings. This is after I wrote my second book. Uh, it was a travel book, a Dead Bad in Paraguay. Yes. I wanted to be like a writer, like a standard with the glasses and the blazer going to bookstores and signing. I wanted to be a normal dude. I didn't want to be this in this infamous guy. So I kind of want, I did see myself in a normal fame, like a writer's type of fame, sure, sure. but that wasn't in the cards for me. I was just too useful for the establishment to, to say, see how there's toxic men who hate women and take advantage and rape them and blah, blah, blah. I was such a useful idiot in an accidental way, just by me having fun. And so I got used in that way, but I always, I always try to harness what life gives me. I can't control what other people say about me. I mean, you can try to sue anyone who um, says bad things about you on the internet, but you'll find that's a very costly way of trying to control. Oh yeah. So I just decided to go with it. Yeah, I guess I can't change it. So I'm how can I? The black hat, right? Exactly. How can I? To watch or listen to the rest of this episode, go to DonovanSharp.com. Thanks for watching.